Following my initial hype drop video and investigation, I received an email from their media team. Now, I didn't publicize it at the time because I felt like the timing was a bit off, but after six months, I want to see if the assurances made in the email have come to fruition. Is hype drop just as scummy now as they once were? At least in my opinion. Maybe they've gotten better or maybe they've gotten worse. Let's investigate. The XG270 from ViewSonic packs a 240Hz IPS display into a 27-inch form factor whilst looking sexy from the rear and sleek up front. A true 1 millisecond grade grade response time keeps ghosting at bay for seamless fast-paced gameplay, and color reproduction is on point with 99% of the sRGB gamut in view. You can thank IPS for that. The XG270 is built for gamers concerned with retaining among the smoothest playback at little to no expense. Check it out and more from ViewSonic down below. So a brief overview for those who didn't see the original video, Hypedrop is a loot box website. I know, it's already leaving a sour taste in the mouth. Sites like these make money by charging flat fees for boxes containing random items, a few of which are more expensive than the box itself, and many of which are significantly less expensive. That's of course how they make money, right? The odds are in their favor. They need to be, otherwise they'll lose money, and businesses aren't in the business of losing money, I mean, come on. It's a form of gambling, but it's worse in ways. See, when you play something like roulette, the odds are obvious. Bet red on a wheel with two zeros, and you've got an 18 and 38 chance of winning, so a little under 50%. And you're paid out according to the risk level, right? So betting red and winning only pays one to one, but betting a single number and winning pays, in most cases, 35 to one. Sure, the odds of winning are much lower, but it pays so much better, right? But many loot box websites are straight up scams in my opinion, and here's why. You don't know the odds. Why is that distinction important? Because if I told you that this gaming on a budget box for $5 had one in 1,000 odds of awarding something worth more than $5, which would mean you technically win, would you bother? I sure as heck wouldn't. I mean, those odds are terrible. 999 times out of 1,000, I'm gonna lose money. So. Why would I throw money into it? Hype Drop used to be like this, until videos like ours were published. Around that time, I received an email stating that changes were going to be made to make things less shady. And to my great surprise, Hype Drop has actually added percent odds for each product in said box. In this case, the most common items are game codes, 12% each for these, with the exception of one game, and the most expensive item, a Core i9-9980XE, uh, yeah, .00, .00 1-5%. To put this into perspective, you're 8,000 times more likely to win a cheap game key than you are to win the top items. It's literally 0.12 divided by 0 0.000015, because we need to convert from percentages, or you could just do percent over percent, whatever. You've got better odds of finding third age armor from a freaking clue scroll in RuneScape than you do winning a 9980XE. And how many of you ever won third age armor from a clue scroll? Did you ever win Third Age Armor, Nate? Nope. Nope. And keep in mind, we're taking Hype Drop at its word with these odds. They could be totally made up. Illegal? Yeah, you bet. But how would you go about proving such a claim if you had that suspicion? And that's the grain of salt we're taking with loot box websites that actually display odds. It's a step in the right direction, but it doesn't ultimately solve anything. The not so simple part of a virtual mystery box is the legendary algorithm we work with to determine which item your box will reveal. This is the work of our tech wizards, and their magic is what creates the fun and excitement behind the VMBs. LOL. They have a page titled Provably Fair that attempts to break down how things are kept, I guess, fair, but it's super vague and ultimately ends up confusing clients more so than reassuring them. You'll generate your own seed, they'll generate their own seed, and then they have a play count that keeps things fresh and original, I guess. But their server seed is encrypted, and there's no way on your side, at least, to verify that the hash is unbiased. It's it's just a cluster. Like, why even bother saying this if you can't actually prove it? I mean, if, if you're gonna say it's provably fair, prove it. But you haven't done that. You've just explained how the model works in vague terms. Hypedrop also seems to have a problem pricing out some components. This Ryzen box costs 50 bucks, but several of the cheapest items in it have inflated market values. This Hyper 212 Evo sells all day on Amazon for 35 bucks and below. That's actually what it's worth new, but Hypedrop wants you to believe otherwise. 
Yeah, not even close. And assuming you actually win this thing, I mean, the odds are in your favor, you can bet your bank account the site's only gonna give you a fraction of its value back should you choose to cash it. And that's what a lot of people will do if they don't end up with the thing that they like. They'll get a percentage of the values item back and ultimately Hype Drop consumes the rest of that. Definitely not ideal for 50 bucks. And that's supposedly what this thing is worth, right? But let's assume you wanted to try your luck anyway. What's gonna happen? You're gonna load up your linked Facebook account with money from G2A or some other sketchy site and gamble. So let's do that a few times. First, let's try this $50 Ryzen box. All right, we're gonna top this boy up. Let's see. I guess we're gonna use G2A. I wanna add, let's do $100. I agree that I'm 18. That security is just top notch, Nate. <laughs> I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and like my entire life is gonna disappear. All right, so I'm uh, now I'm level five. I added a hundred bucks to my account, so I, I I got bumped up from level one to level five. That's awesome. Uh, we're yeah, we've topped up a hundred dollars, and we're just gonna start shopping. Let's do that Ryzen box first. I'm only gonna do this one time because this box is pretty freaking expensive. Let's go ahead and buy it. I've read the facts. That <laughs> do you know the facts? The chance of unboxing an item is always displayed clearly, along with all the items you could possibly unbox. The chances do not increase the more times you play a box. We recommend ordering every item you unbox. The animation is purely for entertainment purposes because yeah, they already determine your results. If you are unhappy with your product, you may exchange it for something else. And you'll see, we can get money back for the product that we that we win, but it's not gonna be the full price of the right. item or the what they say is the full price. So this is our spin, here we go. Ba -ba -ba. Wow. Not bad. Okay. <laughs> oh, we want an item that's that's actually pretty good. That's better than I. Redo the video. Dude, every yeah, we need to refilm this. Every single time I did this in the last hype drop video, I won stickers. You know, like something stupid that was worth less than the box was. Uh, this cooler is with the MA610P. That's actually a pretty good cooler, but I don't think it's worth. What are they saying? It's worth seventy-two thirty-nine. Okay, so yeah, they're saying that this cooler on. Amazon is worth 48.45 opposed to 72. So we think that we want an item that's worth a lot more than it actually is. Now, let's see, we can sell it actually for 65 bucks. That's not bad because now if we sell it, Go we end up own. with more money than we started with. Yeah. Not bad. This literally did not go the way I was expecting it to. <laughs> Just want you to know that the math is the same no matter what, okay? The odds of getting that were apparently 2%. Uh, a little over 2%. Uh, screw it, let's go ahead and buy another box. We just won money from here, so let's, let's just do it again. Let's see what we get. Oh, so close, right? You know, they want you to think that you were so close to getting it, but they emphasize that there's really no difference. What does this mean? Sell for 9.2 raised, wait, nine raised to the 0.2 e to the negative 13th power? Seems legit. What the heck is that crap? <laughs> Let's just sell it and see. We're at 65 bucks now. Nine dollars. We just got nine bucks back for that. Holy crap. There you go. There is one of the ways they make money. Now we're gonna move on to something that is worth considerably less so we can roll it a few times. Where's that gaming on a budget box? Uh, yep, here, okay. So these are 4.99 rolls, and uh, yeah, we showed these items briefly before. Let's just uh, let's just see what happens. Game key. It's gonna be a game key. It's gotta be super hot. Make sure okay, uh, we can sell it for 69 cents. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you're losing al almost the entire $5 per roll, even if you sell this item back. So you know they're getting these game keys super cheap. And we talk about this later in the video as well. It's kind of fun. It kind of is. I mean, that's the point. Gambling is supposed to be addictive. That's right. how they make money. A dirt rally key. Again, sell for 69 cents. There we go. I don't need these. I already have these. Same thing here. Burnout. Paradise. Five bucks. Selling again. Super hot. Again, remember our odds, you'll see, we talk about this later, our odds for getting a game key in this box are 95%. Ooh, another game code, Spore Origin. All right, sell for 69 cents. I don't even know why I'm selling these, honestly. I could probably make more money on <laughs> if I sold these separately on G2A. Whatever, here we go. Uh, another Spore Digital, not even surprised, sell. Again, just gonna keep doing this till we run out of money. And it's spore. We didn't even win the Intel CPU cooler, which apparently has a 2% chance of being drawn. 
remember the first thing that we won was that bigger Cooler Master Cooler, and that had a 2.6% right. gen. And, and we actually ended up selling that back for more than it was worth. So it is certainly possible to win more expensive items, but the odds are so low that it ultimately, in my opinion, is not worth the hassle or the money, which I think is the more obvious thing. So yeah, there you go. We at least um, tried it for you guys. So you can see how it works. And we did win something pretty cool, but then we started winning game keys over and over and over and over. Now I took a total of five statistics courses in college. One thing each and every professor emphasized was the importance of mutually exclusive compounding events. I know that sounds like a mouthful and kind of daunting, but bear with me, it's actually a fairly simple principle. If you flip a coin, your odds are roughly 50-50. We'll assume an even 50% chance. Let's say you flip heads the first time. It actually is heads. Cool, that worked out. But what are the odds of flipping heads a second time? still 50-50. You see, in mutually exclusive events, it's tails actually, the odds of future flips don't magically change based on historical trends. You can look back and say that the odds of flipping heads twice in a row are 0.5 times 0.5, which would be 0.25, but independent flips experience the same odds all the time. Consider the gaming on a budget box here. If you roll a game code like I did the first time at 12% odds each, with the exception of that dirt rally, key at 11%, eight keys in total, the odds of actually drawing a game key in this box are 95%. If I draw again for the same $5, my odds are, again, 95% in favor of a game key. The odds don't change based on whatever I previously won. And that sucks in this case because a vast majority of the items here are worth less than $5. So there is such a thing in stat known as expected value, and it represents the weighted average of all possible values in a random variable given respective weights. I know that sounds a bit intimidating, but bear with me. The weights in this case are the odds disclosed by hype drop for each item, we'll take them at their word, and the value of each item is of course its price. So let's hop on over to Excel. What you'll see here are two sets of calculated expected values for the $5 gaming on a budget loot box. Keep in mind that in order for the company to make money on paper, the EV or expected value needs to fall below the price of the box, again, five bucks. Otherwise, the company would be undervaluing the box itself given the odds presented, and they'd statistically lose money on the box over time. Again, no one's in that business, but I found an EV of 7.1, which is actually higher than five. So something's not adding up, but what could it be? These are all the prices that they gave us. Oh. Maybe that's it. How about the displayed product values? Take this 9980XE for example. Hype Drop says it's worth $2,000. We took them at their word, but this processor is now a generation old and the 10980XE, which is a better, newer counterpart, its replacement, has an MSRP of only $1,000. We actually reviewed it right here, in case you're wondering. So we know for a fact that the actual fair market value of the 9980XE is far less than $2,000 now. Now sure, you could hop on over to Amazon or the like and find third party retailers asking ridiculous sums of cash for this CPU because it's old and vintage. I don't know how they, what they would use to justify the $2,000 asking price, but I'm sure you can find $2,000 asking prices nonetheless. And it means literally nothing. They could ask $10,000, $10 million, doesn't matter. What matters is what the chip sells for. Now, to be fair to Hype Drop, we'll need to navigate every product here and make sure to include fair market values across the board, even if it means quoting a higher price than what their site says. And there is, there, there are actually a few instances of that, not big changes, but noteworthy ones nonetheless. And that's what I've done in this column here. Most of these product prices were referenced directly from Amazon or Newegg, so I'm assuming US market rates. The prices in gray reflect eBay prices because these products were no longer sold directly by big box e-retailers at reasonable prices, probably because they're a generation or two old. And the blue highlights represent near equivalent upgrades on Amazon for older hardware on Hype Drop. So like an X470 board is on Hype Drop. I listed the X570 counterpart just to give them the benefit of the doubt. And to my surprise, this overall expected value still came out to over five, meaning that at least on paper, again, the loot box is undervalued and the company should statistically lose money over time. And this 
really confused me at first. I actually messaged my brother, who also graduated uh, from engineering school with me a few years ago. He's the math guy. He really helped me get through my calculus and statistics classes, and I asked him what the heck was going on because this business model on paper doesn't seem to make sense. So I took a few notes from things that he had told me, and then I also posted this graph on Twitter. I asked all of you what you thought was going on. A few of you immediately concluded that Hype Drop was lying about the odds. Certainly a possibility, but again, it's a claim I can't back up nor prove, so I can't make this statement here. A few others mentioned bulk discounts, and, and sure, I mean, I think it's possible for the game keys especially, but it makes no sense in my opinion, in my, what? I have an MBA, so I would say that I know something about business and how money works. It doesn't make any sense for a company like this to buy pallets of graphics card CPUs, entire PCs for hundreds of thousands of dollars. If I was running a company like this, I'd drop ship these items to winners, if uh, maybe even directly from Amazon and Newegg, uh, in, in the off chance that they'd actually win something valuable up here. And all they'd need to do in order to offset the savings from bulk purchases is adjust the odds. So take Two seconds, right? And that's much safer than sitting on expensive inventory, which is a no-no in business. Even if they're only buying a few of each top dollar item, there's just no need to. So where I think they're able to bring this EV below five is with the game keys. Many of you pointed to these in particular and mentioned that some of these games were even free at some points in time. They're older titles, already dirt cheap on sites like G2A if you want to go that route, and thus fairly attainable. So. Perhaps our assumption about the true cost of these keys here is wrong. If G2A cut a deal with Hype Drop, let's say, they could bring game code overhead down by upwards of 80%, which would heavily offset our expected value for the box. Cutting game codes alone by 80% brings this to under three, which means that the box is actually pretty profitable at the $5 price. So this is where I expect they're making money. And I think it makes sense. A vast majority of gamblers will win these keys, I won keys, where the profit margins are huge. That's what they want. That's where they make their money. But look, without going through their financials and win statistics, all of this is speculation. We can do the math and study various outcomes, but we can't claim without a shadow of a doubt that any of this is happening the way it is. Nonetheless, I do hope you've at least learned something and will approach loot box websites with a healthy degree of skepticism, assuming you don't already, and most of you probably are. There are valid reasons why so many of these sites exist. I mean, let's, to put it lightly, let's summarize a few of them. They don't require much overhead. They're profitable. They're easy to set up. You could easily rig them. And that's why I stay away from them, because anybody in his or her basement could set one of these sites up and make a ton of money. And that's also why I think the industry is extremely shady. Are they fun? Maybe to some, sure, but kids should never be a part of this equation. And that's where I draw the line, specifically. Adults blow their money on stupid crap all the time, whatever. It's their money, they earn it, they're responsible. But innocent kids, unaware of bias and scams, could easily fall into a trap like this. So stay vigilant, my name's Greg, thanks for learning.